top of your forehead, maybe here to here, you want to make small changes. Hey everyone, it's Crystal here. This video is all about how to get the most out of your pageant headshot. Watch this before you invest in those pricey headshots because they are not cheap. Sometimes if you go with the top of the line photographer, it can be thousands of dollars worth of an investment. So very, very important. It is the first impression that the judges see alongside your paperwork. But because pageants are by default a very visual activity, they want to see if you look the part. Now this is the video that I wish I saw before I got my pageant headshots. I have had headshots taken by so many photographers over the years, some of whom specialize in pageants and others who were more lifestyle or active headshot portrait artists, <coughs> portrait artists, photographers. Before the date of your shoot, you want to gather all of the clothing that you'll be wearing for the shoot. Now, a lot of the time, if the photographer is used to shooting pageant women and contestants, this person can be the greatest source of guidance because he or she has seen it all. Often they'll tell you, hey, bring interesting necklines, bring colors that bring out your eyes, wear certain fabrics that are in, jewelry that really speaks to sort of the aesthetic of that organization. But as a rule of thumb, um, one thing that you want to wear is clothes that offers a contrast with the color of your hair and also the background. To give an example, a blonde, someone with really light colored hair, can usually get away with darker jewel tones, darker colors, because the blondness of the hair really stands out against a darker color. Now for me, I've never colored my hair, so I always liked to wear colors and fabrics that you know had a little bit of shine because my hair is so black, I didn't have very much dimensionality in my hair, so I liked to wear really bright colors that made my hair stand out. I never ever wear black if I can help it. For any studio portraits, for anything with headshots, I always avoid black because I knew that there would just be too much black. Like black hair, black clothes, ugh. But more importantly than your hair is also the background because if the background is black and you're wearing black, you're gonna end up like a floating head like this guy. So ask your photographer what color they're gonna use and then plan your outfits accordingly. Make sure you also bring everything that is a possibility. You'd rather be overprepared than underprepared. I'm that person who brings like 15 blouses for a three look session because I just wanna have options and I don't always know what color wall I'm gonna be standing in front of. So I'd rather be prepared by having the garment with me. You'll also wanna bring a light color top and I'll tell you why at the end of the video. When you're finding a photographer, if you can afford it, invest in the best photographer that money can buy. But if you don't have the budget, that's A-OK -okay too. You can also go with a lesser known photographer, but make sure that this person shoots people, preferably someone who does portraits regularly, even someone who does actor's headshots. The reason why is that photography is so much more than technique, equipment, and tactics. It's about being able to draw the best out of you in 90 minutes. Someone who knows how to loosen up their talent and get you vibing and feeling good because that is what results in the best photos. It's not just the technique of being a good photographer, it's also having the personality and having worked with a lot of different people so they know how to put you at ease. A landscape photographer or a product photographer, those are very different skill sets. Choose someone who goes with people and ideally someone who also can do some basic retouching because that's the biggest difference between a normal headshot and a pageant headshot. It's the level of retouching, let me tell you. Speaking of retouching, you want to make sure to discuss ahead of time if retouching is included in the fee. If retouching isn't included, ask for the photos to be given to you in RAW so that those assets have enough information for you to take it to someone who is a skilled retoucher who can then polish it up for you. And the night before your shoot, make sure that you eat a low salt diet. I always felt really bloated if I ate a lot of salt the day before my shoot. You want to do all the same basics for anything. Uh, sleep well, eat well, wash your hair the night before, do everything you need to do so that the next day you feel like a million bucks. If you feel like a million bucks, you look like a million bucks. Something I'm also starting to see is a move towards more natural looking headshots. So if you go with an actor's headshot photographer, for instance, and you get like two looks or three looks, your first look or your first two looks can be more natural looking. And then for the third look or the last look, I would just say, hey, give me 10 minutes. I'm gonna add some lipstick. I'm going to darken my rouge. I'm going to add some false eyelashes, tease my hair, make my hair real big. 
Then that last look can be your pageant headshot. You can always add makeup. It's a lot harder to take it away, but if you layer it on towards the end of your photo shoot, that can become your pageant look. I really like this because I think that the photos end up being so much more usable over the course of your young adult life. I don't think I would ever put my pageant headshot on LinkedIn, but an actor's headshot, it's much more natural looking and your investment in the photo shoot just goes a much longer way. If you do go with the pageant photographer, they will usually have a recommended makeup vendor. I highly recommend going with them because if you're gonna pay for the photographer, not getting the preferred hair and makeup is always a bit of a risk. So if you just do the whole package, you are much more likely to be guaranteed a look that is what you're going for. During the shoot itself, I like having a playlist because it really lightens the mood and it just makes everything a little bit more fun. Remember, you have to be in a good mood for those photos to turn out glowingly nice. You also wanna have nice and fond memories of the session. If you're paying for the session, remember you are the client. So if you wanna play your I'm a winner playlist, play it. In some shoots, there will be a fan and the fan will be blasting in your face in order to get your hair to fly up. I love the look of some of these shots. The problem though is it always would make my eyes water. The way to prevent your eyes from watering and ruining all your makeup is to blink often, blink fast. It's the only way that helped me from tearing up and getting to a point where I was trying to keep my eyes open, but then everything would start to really get uncomfortable. Remember, you already have makeup all up in your tear ducts and in your water lines, so you're already a little bit sensitive in the eye area. Don't be afraid to blink, because if you're doing a blink and the photographer catches you mid-blink, you're not gonna use the photo anyway. You just need one good photo in that look. So just make sure to blink as much as you want during that. I mean, the photographers hate when I tell girls this, but it's true, like just blink and it will help. It also helps when you're staring into the sun. If you're ever doing an outdoor photo shoot and the sun is in your eyes, just blink as much as possible or just close your eyes, look into the sun. Your pupils will naturally sort of shrink, getting used to all of that exposure. And then when you open, it won't be so painful. So now let's talk about the actual modeling technique. Every single time a photographer takes your photo, you want to adjust after the photo has been taken. If you're getting a full body shot, alternate between having your hand on your hips, different shoulders. But if it's a headshot that is literally chest, like really tight, maybe the top of your forehead, maybe here to here, you want to make small changes. Think about it like body part, okay? So for instance, chin, right? And then you can also think about it in terms of eyes, like. You wanna keep them subtle. And the reason why you do these changes is so that you don't give the photographer the exact same look and the same pose. This is also a good way to learn your angles. I learned that I look like my eyes are crossed in certain angles because I actually would look at the photos afterwards and say, oh, I don't really like how that looks. So that gave me the feedback of knowing what angles did not work for me. That's the best way for you to learn what your angles are as well. After your headshot, Make sure that they don't retouch you to a point where you don't look like you. I like lower amounts of retouching because it just allows the judges to see who you are. The worst is when you have a contestant walk in and she looks nothing like her photo. And you might even wonder like, oh, did this girl get a nose job? Or, you know, maybe I'm judging a teen pageant and someone bubbly and peppy and 15 year old comes in, but her photo looks like she's 26. You just wanna look your age and you wanna look like you. So retouching really is its own art. In general, in my humble opinion, less is more. But you wanna to defer to the photographer that you're going with. If he or she specializes in pageants, he or she is going to have their MO for how to go about it. So it's a fine balance between trusting and you know, letting your photographer do what you pay them to do, but at the same time, remembering that this is not the photographer who matters. It's really you, you're the client, and you need a photo that represents the very best of you. The judges are looking for you, not your photographer. It's okay to ask for something. It's okay to ask that they retouch this, to dial it back in this. Just make sure that, you know, you, you communicate clearly. They are artists though, so just be nice about it. 
Another reason why you want to be nice is because pageant photographers all talk to all of the other directors. Remember, it's a very, very small world and it's all one community. Now, earlier this video, I told you to bring a light colored top and thank you for sticking around to this point in the video. I'm going to tell you why. Well, the reveal is that if you have a light colored top, it allows you to use photo editing applications to change the color of your top. So if you're stuck between two or three or even four colors, just wear the white top and then have the editor, the retoucher, or you can even do it yourself, change the color. Let me give you an example. This is me in three different dresses. No, actually, it's all just one dress. I just changed the colors. Can you tell which one is the original? Actually, it's this one. As a future title holder, you are going to be in charge of your own marketing during your year of service. So if you know how to change the colors of your outfits, and I'm going to recommend a couple of apps for you to do that in my description, you have the ability to create the illusion that you have more outfits than you actually do. So if you have one white dress, you have an infinite number of ways to wear a pink dress or a yellow dress to create the illusion that you have a much larger wardrobe than you really do. Plus for things like the holiday season, Season, you can take what was you in a white dress and turn it red, right? That's just an example of one of the many things that you can do. As a title holder, remember, you are in charge of your own content marketing. You are the CEO of you. So by getting your brand out there, by posting lots of Instagram pictures, knowing how to do these things, like change the color of an outfit or, you know, improve or retouch your own photos, those are all things that are just gonna help you get that much farther ahead. Please take a look at some of my other videos right here and don't be afraid to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. I am a real person and I do read your comments. Thank you for spending your time on my channel. See ya, bye.